Thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals, where it's always the hour for revival. I'm your brother in the Lord, Brother HR, and it's always the hour for revival. Glory, hallelujah. I feel the fire of the Holy Ghost on me tonight. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The Lord is great and greatly to be praised. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. I'm going to invite a few people to tune in tonight, and I'm going to entitle the message tonight, Totelestai. The word Totelestai in Greek is, it is finished. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Totelestai. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Totelestai, which means it is finished. Thank you, Lord. Father, hide me behind the cross. Let it be none of me, but all of you. Speak of these lips of clay, let I leave here singing. I got just what I wanted and more from the Lord, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen, glory to God, hallelujah, Holy Ghost, glory to God, amen, thank you, Lord Jesus, if you got your Bibles, turn me to the book of John, the 19th chapter, and verse 30, amen, thank you, Lord Jesus, when Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished, and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He gave up his earthly spirit. He gave up what was inside of himself. See, now, let me explain something to you. Jesus was fully God, and is fully God, and he was fully man. Amen? Thank you, Lord Jesus. He was fully God and fully man, and he gave himself over to the Father's will. Now, check this out, y'all. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He gave himself a human will, a human freedom to choose, though he is God in flesh. He gave himself a human will to choose because he loved us so much he became like us. Why did he become like us? So that we might become like him. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Amen. It's time we learn again how to shed off this spiritual skin that we got in our life. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We got to learn to shake the dust from off of us, because the Bible said that God said to the serpent in the garden, you will live from the dust of the ground. You will eat of the dust of the ground. What is dust made out of? Dead skin particles. He's saying you're going to eat off the things of the flesh. You're going to feed off the things of the flesh. Now, in Genesis, he's a serpent. In Revelation, he's the serpent, the dragon, and Satan. How did he go from being a serpent in the garden to a serpent and a dragon? It's easy to tell you that somebody's been feeding him. He's been feeding off flesh for a very long time, and he's getting fat off our spiritual fleshly issues. He's getting fed from the issues within our tissues. He's getting fed from within our life and within our walk, the, the, the dead things we're holding on to. Why do you think Jesus said, dust the, 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 uh, shake the dust from your garments? He's saying, don't let the things that the people said to you when they were in their flesh or done in their flesh attach themselves to you that they can work through you. Let your life attach to the faith of God so that God can work through your life. Amen. Bless you, Holy Ghost. We got to learn to take every thought captive 
bless you, Holy Ghost, because not every thought is a thought from God. Let me say this. There is godly thoughts. There is demonic thoughts. Then there is our thoughts. And if we know that we love God and we're following God and a thought comes in our head that was not from God, then we know if we're not thinking about it for ourselves, but it just pops up and it's something that don't glorify God, we got to take that thing into submission. We got to take authority over that thought. And let me tell you something. Take no prisoners. Thank you, Holy Ghost. When you take authority over it, make sure it's destroyed and under the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Like I said earlier, the name of the message today is called Totelestai. Carrie, God bless you. Jeff, God bless you. Diane, God bless you. I love you all. Thank you for tuning in to Hour for Revival. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. But he wasn't just saying, it's finished because he had victory over the devil. That part is true. But why did he say, from the cross, Totelestai, it is finished. Check this out. This was a decree over your destiny. Amen. Hallelujah to the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Totelestai, it is finished. Do you know that in Rome, when they would get ready to execute a prisoner or even put them in prison, they would write the name of their crime over their head. Now, it's interesting. What was the crime that Jesus was accused of? Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. He, he was accused of blasphemy because he declared his divinity. And when they actually put out in Hebrew, Greek, and or, uh, Greek, Roman, and Latin, the actual words that they put out spelt out the sacred name of God. It was not I-N-R-I. -I. That is not biblical. But the Hebrewic, Hebrewic pronunciation that was upon that cross was the name Yahweh, meaning what they accused him of, he really is. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. But also, the people of God, before they would send the lamb in to be executed, are you following me, for the sins of the people, they would put a, they would put a sign around the neck saying which house they came out of. And when they put the sign around Jesus' neck, it said the name of God, the sacred name of God that the Jews are even afraid to write down. And they said, the name Yahweh across it. God was declaring, this is my lamb. This is from my house. This is my work. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Yeshua of Nazareth spelt out Yahweh, the sacred name of God. But it's amazing that the very mountain that Jesus died on was Mount Moriah. Did you know that? The place of, of abandonment and, and, and the place of the, the place of discouragement. But it was also the place of testing and blessing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. When Abraham took Isaac to the altar, Pastor touched on this this morning. He didn't even know he was getting into my message. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Amen. I love you, Pastor Matt, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. But the Holy Ghost led a man of faith. He led Abraham and Isaac up the mountain. And he didn't sacrifice his son because the father stood in and he said, 
you've not withheld your only son from me. Jesus is the only begotten son of God, but because of his sonship, we are now invited into sonship. Are you following me? Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let me say this. The first Adam dug up thorns. The final Adam bore the thorns. The first Adam was about his will. The final Adam said, Father, not my will, but yours be done. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The first Adam sinned in the garden. Sin entered in through the garden. The final Adam said in the garden, Father, not my will, but yours be done. And the 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 blood fell from his head, sweat fell from his head as blood. What happened? God the Father said to Adam, you're going to work by the sweat of your brow. He told it to him as he was leaving the garden. Jesus, God in flesh, the Son of God, is with the Father in the garden and sweat falls from his head and it hits the earth. What happened? God redeemed the dirt. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. So man could once again communicate with God. They could once again walk with God in the cool of the day in their soul. They could communicate. They could have a relationship with the Lord. It's not about a religion. It's about a relationship. Living and loving the one that died for me and you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise you, Father. Glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. When he said, not my will, but yours be done, divinity stepped up and humanity stepped down. Humanity submitted to divinity. Divinity said, I'm going to give you the power to do this. Because the Father's word says, Jesus said in the, in, in the Bible, he said, nothing is impossible with God and nothing is possible for those that believe. Jesus totally submitted and believe the Father. And he showed us as an example, if I trust the Father, you can trust the Father. Because Christ was not abandoned. Even in Psalms it said, because you won't leave me abandoned, my soul will rejoice. He said, because you won't leave me abandoned in hell, my soul will rejoice. That was a Messianic Psalm over the Messiah. Also, did you know this? That if they wanted you to know a psalm in the temple, they would begin to quote, or they'd actually begin to sing a certain verse out of that psalm, and you would know that psalm is the one they were coming from. Hey, uh, Miriam, God bless you. Ruth, God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I better start going live more, more at night now. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I do love you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Please share this message with everybody that you know needs a word from the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But l l listen, the actual translation of the word is, my God, my God, for this I was kept. He turned it around at the cross. He said, this is why you've kept me. L -l Listen to this. Thank you, Jesus. He said, before he went to the cross at the upper room, a voice spoke from heaven. And some that was around him said, an, an angel has spoken to him. Others said it was thunder. But he said, this voice came for you, not for me. Because the voice said, I have kept you to this hour. You've been kept. See, if Jesus is God in flesh, how can God leave God? Are you hearing me? Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. How could God abandon God but tell us he won't abandon us? 
He's the one that said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So if he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, then we got to understand he didn't leave himself at the cross because he came to redeem us. The Bible said that Jesus is the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world, meaning it was set from the beginning, from the very fall of mankind to the time Jesus came, it was set up that Jesus would come and die for the sins of humanity and redeem fallen humanity back to divinity, to bring salvation back through his cross. But he cried out, it is finished. Now they would write out, now that you know, now hold on, one more, one more thing real quick. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. The dark cloud was not a judgment against Christ, who is God. It was God the Father visiting God the Son publicly. How do I know this? The Bible said that God wraps himself in darkness. He makes darkness his covering, and he covers himself in a cloud. When this dark cloud came over the sacrifice, it was the Father as the high priest of heaven overlooking the Son, who is the high priest of heaven now. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Are you following me? Thank you, Jesus. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. When Caiaphas ripped, His garment, he was no longer, according to the Mosaical law, he was no longer a priest of God. In fact, when Aaron's garment was removed from him, he died. And the anointing and the, and the authority and the priesthood was given to somebody else. Let me tell you something. It's interesting. Caiaphas' name means set up. <laughs> If you go back and look at the name Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, it was a setup that he would not be high priest anymore. God said, I, I'm bringing you into retirement. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. On that day, God put every priest that was there out of work. Hallelujah. Je Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. I want you to understand something else. The Bible said, come, let us reason together, though our sins be as scarlet. Though your sins be as scarlet, I will make them white as snow. Do you know that there was a scarlet thread tied over the temple? Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. A scarlet letter. There was a sin. Another letter, a, a scarlet cloth. There, there, there was an accusation of their sins nailed to the temple roof. I'm gonna get. I'm getting somewhere with this. Just hold on. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. I went down a soul journey there, a rabbit trail, as some would call it, but it was a soul journey. I went on a soul journey. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. But anyways. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Check this out, y'all. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. The scarlet thread was hanging over the temple door. And the Bible shows, uh, our historic history shows us through the rabbinical teachings. The rabbis teach that when the sacrifice was accepted and the sins of the people had been rolled over or even forgiven for another year. Then the scarlet, thank you, Jesus, the scarlet cloth would turn white. Guess what happened? According to rabbinical teachers, the scarlet cloth turned white the day Yeshua at three o'clock in the afternoon Gave up his last breath. Also, by the way, did you know this? The lamb, according to the Mosical law, had to die by three o'clock. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Jesus fulfilled it all. He is 
the spotless Lamb of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Amen. Totelestai. It is finished. So not only was he declaring his victory over the devil, but he was also declaring his authority he was given to you and me, saying, you can now go on with your life. Go free. Remember, he gave a promise. He who the Son sets free is free indeed. Let me tell you something. People say, well, God can't look on sin, Brother HR. How do you explain that? Let me explain this to you. If God can look at blood of turtle doves and goats and lambs and sheep and bullock, why couldn't he look upon his own blood? The Bible said that Jesus entered heaven through his own blood. Are you ready for this? Not only did he enter heaven through his own blood, but he, he said, I'm going to make y'all my witnesses and I'm going to put y'all outside the temple. Why were they the witnesses of God? The witnesses is what the people were called that would stand outside the temple. And they would listen for the sound of the priest to stop moving. And if the priest died, there would be no sound. But the Bible says after 10 days, hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Are y'all hearing me? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. After 10 days, and it took 10 days for the priest to go from the beginning to the end. It, it, it literally took 10 days. And the Bible says after 10 days had fully come, after the day of Pentecost had fully come, there came a sound from heaven as a mighty rushing wind. And it filled the place where they were assembled and tongues of fire fell upon them. Thank you, Holy Ghost. That cloven tongues of fire came upon them and they began to speak with new tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. Bless you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Just that message alone right there to preach. But I want you to know, I want to go a little bit deeper with y'all. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. After a criminal paid a price that was high enough and had waited long enough for their redemption to be to come through, the, the guard the Roman centurion would ride over the headboard of the door, the doorpost. Are you hearing me? Thank you, Holy Ghost. Over the doorpost, they would write Totelestai. Now check this out. It reminded me of another scripture. See, Jesus is the Passover lamb. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Bless God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Exodus 12 and 4. Or uh, 12 and 5, actually. Actually, no, let's go to 4. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And if the household be too little for the lamb... Let him his neighbor go let him go to his neighbor's house next to him and take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let me tell you something. God was saying you ain't in this alone. If you if you can't get if you can't get to the Lord just by what you got in your house, if there ain't nobody. Got enough of God in them in your house? Go to your neighbor's house. Get a hold of the Lamb. Go to church. Get a hold of the Lamb of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let me put it in today's language. That's what God's saying. Amen. Praise the Lord. And you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. And, and by the way, it's September. The month of September, the 24th, is actually the 14th day of the month of the first year of the new year in Judaism. On the Jewish calendar, it's September the 24th. 
That is when Jesus was crucified, September the 24th. He's the Passover lamb. Are you hearing me? Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. And they shall eat it, and the flesh of that night roast with fire, unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs shall ye eat. Bible records that they ate this meal together the night that Jesus died. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Or the night he was arrested, that they had ate this meal together. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. They shall eat the flesh in that night. Roast with fire, verse 8. Roast with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs and shall eat it. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I was on verse 5 earlier. Your lamb shall be without blemish. A male of the first year, you shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Jesus died at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and everybody was there to view the execution, because really this execution was planned from the beginning by the Father in heaven. Are you hearing me? Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. But now look at this. The Bible said he separated them out from among the goats. He said among the sheep or the goats. It, it, it's a lamb. And you're to take him from the sheep and from the goats. Like I was saying, Abraham had sacrificed Isaac, or was getting, I'm sorry, was about to sacrifice Isaac at the altar. And the father spoke through his messenger and said, Touch not your son, for I know now that you fear God, for you have not withheld your only son from me. Now, the, uh, people get confused by the word angel. This angel was a messenger. The word angel is angelos, meaning messenger. And the messenger said, you've not withheld your only son from me, meaning it was him who made the request, but yet it was him who spoke with God's voice. How does he speak with God's voice? This is an image of the pre-incarnated Christ. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let me say this. And they shall eat the flesh in the night, roast with fire, unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs shall ye eat. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Isn't it interesting that they were sitting by the fire when Peter denied knowing Jesus, and the Bible said he went and wept bitterly. Are you hearing me? Come on now. I, I know that's a play on words, but what I'm trying to get to the point across is that everything that they were doing in the Old Testament was an image, a type and shadow of what would come for the final testimony. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The Old Testament means the Old Testimony. The Old Testimony ain't going to do it no more for you. You need to get a new, fresh touch, like what happened to me today. Everybody was getting rebaptized and everything today, and, and the Lord spoke to me, and he said, Son, it's time for you to do your first works over. So I came up there and got in the water, and Pastor Matt laid hands on me and prophesied over me and prayed in the spirit with me and next thing I know the Lord got a hold of me and it was like electricity hit that water I went under the water and I came back up and I I, I don't even feel the same thank you Jesus now I mean I've been born again for a long time but the Bible mentions times of refreshing amen thank you Holy Ghost I love you Lord Jesus amen brother Randy Travis wrote a song or some of the song is called Baptized. And he said, This road is long and rocky. Sometimes we're sold and must be cleansed. And I long to feel that water rushing over me again. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. We are baptized into Christ Jesus. Are you hearing me? 
I love you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. And they shall eat the flesh in that night. What is it talking about? Passover, the bread, the wine. This is all Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless you, Holy Ghost. Eat not it raw nor sodden at all at the, at, with water, but roast with fire his head with his legs and with pertinence thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. And that which remaineth of it until the morning, you shall burn with fire. Now listen to this. Thank you, Jesus. The offering was consumed at the cross of Jesus Christ. When he was hanging up on that cross and he cried, Totelestai, it is finished. He's saying there's nothing left of the lamb on the cross the whole body of jesus took it all the cross was enough of a sacrifice it was an acceptable sacrifice for the father because the father said it is finished he spoke it through the son amen but the bible said Jesus said, I do nothing unless I see the Father do it. So from the cross, the Father and the Son were looking at each other's beautiful eyes of love. They were looking into love. And, and the Bible said, seeing the joy that was set before him, he endured the suffering of the cross. But what despising the shame and is sat down at the right hand of God the Father. But now wait a minute. Do you know the Bible says that the blood of Jesus has a voice? It said the blood of Jesus cries greater than the blood of Abel. Remember the Bible said that the blood of Abel cried from the ground. What was it crying for? Justify me. The blood of Jesus cries, it's justified. Totelestai is what his blood cries. It's finished. I've done the work. The prisoner can go free. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen. And now let nothing remain of it until the morning. Well, I was going to... Oh, wait a minute. I... Well, that's good. Thank you, Lord. The Lord just decided to go a little further into teaching. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Listen to this. Verse 11. And thus shall you eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, your staff in your hand, and your, you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. What does that sound like to you? Get on your armor. Get on your moving clothes and get ready to go in God. Amen. Grow in God and go in God. That's the pastor's motto at people's church where i go amen thank you holy ghost pastor matt said it's my motto that they got to grow and go amen thank you lord jesus go make disciples of all nations thank you holy ghost i love you lord jesus amen but let's go back and i should have started with this verse instead but that's all right the lord wanted to go a different way that's good that's that's god amen thank you holy ghost i'm not going to apologize for the holy ghost amen thank you jesus praise the lord amen hallelujah but it says in verse three in this month you shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers a lamb for the house and in the household oh wait a minute i'm i'm actually reading the wrong uh passage here thank you jesus well that would actually explain the uh what was written upon the neck of jesus the uh with, with the sign the sign that was upon the neck of jesus saying that he came out of the house of yahweh see and the father was talking to his son going up Mount Moriah, the same mountain Jesus was dying on. And, and it's and the son asked the father, according to the rabbinical teachings, he was 33 years of age, the same age that Jesus was when he died on the cross. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Say amen. Hallelujah, Lord. But the, check this out. The father was asked by the son, Father, where is the lamb for the sacrifice? And he answered, my son. God will provide a lamb for the sacrifice. But the original translation in Aramaic is this. And in Hebrew, my son, God himself, will be the lamb for the sacrifice. When you read it, how it was written in the time of Christ, it gets a lot deeper and a lot more powerful. He said, my son, God himself, shall be the lamb for the sacrifice. Notice, thank you, Holy Ghost. Notice Abraham said he would be the lamb, but yet he got a ram. Now, Abraham was a prophet of God. He didn't miss it. He said God will be the lamb. But why did he get a ram if he was a lamb? I'm going to explain this to you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. It's interesting that the ram bore thorns, got caught up in thorns in the thickets. But hold on. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Not only did the ram get caught up in the thorns, but the lamb wore the thorns. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Not only did he, not only did the ram wear the thorns on Mount Moriah, the lamb bore the thorns on Mount Moriah. Upon his head was placed a crown of thorns. Jesus, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world, was now speaking to Abraham. And he said, do not kill Isaac. Isaac means to laugh. What if God one day asks you, lay down your joy, lay down what makes you happy, lay down what you've been trusting me for? Could you do it? The Bible said that's why he's called the father of faith, because he trusted God with his son. And he said, you've not withheld your only son from me, but he had another child. That was not his own wife's child. It was his handmaiden's child, Hagar. He had a, a, a child by an Egyptian woman. And it's amazing. The people went into Egypt. And Abraham's handmaiden was Egyptian. Are you seeing soul ties right there? That we're tied together. Thank you, Jesus. I'm almost done, y'all. I know it's late, but I just got to bring this word by the Holy Ghost of God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. But the Bible says, Jesus said, the messenger, he said, you are not withheld your only son from me. He had an Ishmael and an Isaac, but he got the Ishmael because he tried to rush and run over and help God fulfill a promise that God made like God needed his help. And he got an Ishmael when he could have had his Isaac all along. But God was saying to him on Mount Moriah, the place of sacrifice, the place where things go to die, I'm not going to hold you to your Ishmael. I'm just going to keep blessing you with your eyes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. He said, I'm not going to hold you to your mistake. I'm going to pull you through this. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Amen. Here we go. This is what I was looking for. Thank you, G. Exodus 12, 21. Then Moses called for all the elders, praise the Lord, of Israel, and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb to your family and kill the Passover. And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin dip it in the blood that it 
that is the basin, and strike the lintel and the two sides of the post, which with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out of the door of his house until the morning. I told you, Rome wrote a sentence over the person that was in prison. A lot of you today are in prison, but yet in your spirit, but yet when Jesus paid it all, he wrote over your sentence what the Roman soldiers would write over the person who paid for their crime and they could go free and they could move on with their life. He wrote the same thing over your life and mine. He blotted out your transgressions and wrote totelestai. It is finished. It's settled. I've wiped the slate clean. God has said now you can move on with your life. Jesus took that bitter cup from the Father for you and me. Everything the Father poured out on the Son, the whipping we deserved, he took for us. He's our elder brother and he loves us more than we could ever love ourselves and he took the whipping we deserved. And the Father sends correction verbally to his children now. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Why is that? Let me tell you something. A word of rebuke hurts a lot worse than a belt would ever hurt. Because, you know, you really love the Father. You, you, you hear him preaching uh, through you and to you and how much he loves you and, and everything. But then you've done something and you go to church and you hear the preacher say, God don't like that. You know you disappointed the Father. See, he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. What, what is, help me figure out, preacher, what, what, he, what does he mean by that? You know, a rabbi once told me, don't tell me you love me. Show me you love me. How's that? I asked the rabbi. The rabbi said, find out what breaks my heart and don't do it. And he said, you'll show me you love me. It's not the fact that when we slip up that we feel like, you know, like, oh, Lord, I, I, it ain't just the fact we feel bad. Yes, it's good to feel bad, trust me, involving, <laughs> I know what I mean. I'm just saying it's good to feel convicted is what I'm saying. God convicts in a different way. See, the Bible said the Holy Ghost is here to convict of sin, of righteousness, and of the coming judgment. The Holy Spirit will convict you of sin, saying, you know that you need a Savior. You know you need a covering. You've messed up. Come to me and let me clean you up of righteousness. You know you're better than the way you're acting. I love you. Come let me wrap my arms around you. Repent of your sins. Come back to me. I'm calling you back to my side. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Then, finally, of the coming judgment, because the prince of this world has already been judged. We're, we're to warn the world, don't be like the enemy. Don't be condemned. Don't be damned to hell for your sins. Repent of your sins and come to Jesus. Don't let pride keep you outside the mercy line. Let Jesus clean your life up. Let Jesus change your life. That's why he came. Remember, Abraham said, Behold the Lamb. Now see, it was on the doorpost and upon the sides of the lintel of the door. Why was it not at the base of the door? Why was it not over the threshold? Because the blood is so precious, it was never meant to be trampled. And he cried out from heaven, Totelestai. Blood had covered your life. 
Abraham said God himself would be the lamb, but yet he got a ram. Check the lamb, what happens when John sees his cousin Jesus and they hadn't set eyes at all on each other, but yet they met in utero. That's why he said, there's one coming after me that's greater than me that will baptize you in the Holy Ghost and fire. How do he know about the fire? Pentecost hadn't come yet. But the Bible said both mama and baby were filled with the Holy Ghost. That's why John was the greatest of all prophets. Not only did he get to see what the Father promised, but he also got to experience Pentecost, whoo, glory, before Pentecost ever came, because he said Jesus is the baptizer, John said, in the Holy Ghost and fire. A lot of people got the baptism, but they ain't got the fire yet. But let me tell you something. If you'll ever truly submit your life to Jesus Christ and God sets you on fire with the Holy Ghost, people will come from around the world just to watch you burn. You can have naked light bulbs hanging everywhere in an open field. But if you're on fire for the Holy Ghost of God, people will come around the world to watch you burn and stand there, I promise you, around naked light bulbs and hear you preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they'll be saved, they'll be healed, they'll be delivered. Some of you have been running from your God-given calling from heaven and you know God's called you to the ministry. You've been called to street ministry. Lord have mercy, I'm preaching to the choir. And you've been sitting on your blessed assurance. Get up, get out, and get going in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise your Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Bless God, bless God, bless God, bless God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Abraham said, Behold a lamb. Uh, Abraham said, God himself will be the lamb. But now check this out. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. John 1, 29. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. One priest prophesied it. The second priest John was a priest. His father was a high priest. Zachariah was a high priest. But now, in, interesting enough, and I'm, I'm closing after this. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Not only was Zachariah a high priest. Check this out. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. When God sent the word to Zechariah that he would be a daddy through the angel of the Lord Gabriel, he said, how can this be? Same thing Samson's mom and daddy said, how can this be? I'm old. Uh, Sarah said that. And, uh, Abraham said that, how can this be? God said, I got an idea in mind. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hey, Kay, God bless you. I hope you'll go back and watch the message in a little while. I hope you'll share the message in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But in closing, I want to say this. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Zachariah. He said, how can this be? And the angel said, for nine months, you will not be able to talk. You will be totally mute for nine months. And then he vanished. And the Bible says that they thought his that Zechariah had died because they didn't hear the sound of the bells on his ephod moving around. Just like what happened 
on the day of Pentecost. There came a sound from heaven, though, like a mighty rush of wind. It means the priest had made it into the Holy of Holies. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. But God had to shut the mouth of his priest to get the blessing to be birthed. God didn't need his mouth running for him to conceive with his wife. God didn't need that mouth, so he shut the mouth of that priest. For nine months, he could not utter a word. I think he was deaf. I'm not totally remembering that story yet, but hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. And then all the family was picking on him and was and was trying to pick out names and said, we'll, we'll call him Josiah or we'll call him um, mm, mm, let me see. But we'll, we'll call him Josiah or we'll, or, or we'll call him Joseph or we'll call him this or that. And finally, the father spoke and said, His name will be John. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. He said his name is going to be John. Settled. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Finally, I was going to say one more thing. I just heard the Lord say, go a little further. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Then I'm closing. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Bible said that a man's gift maketh room for him. You ain't got to make room for your gift. Your gift makes room for you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. You ain't got to go around telling everybody you're anointed and handing out business cards. No, they're going to tell the anointings on your life. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. He said, He said, The anointing makes room for your gifts. A man's gifts makes room for him and puts him before great people. Are you hearing me? Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. And the Bible said that, that John the Baptist wore camel hair and a leather belt. And the Bible said he looked just like the prophet Elijah. How did he look like the prophet Elijah? Because when Elisha died with the mantle in his life, they took the mantle and they hid it in the temple according to the rabbinical teachers. So he was there in the temple, Zechariah was, and he heard this, that his son would come in the spirit of Elijah. So what did he do? He goes and he takes, thank you, Holy Ghost, glory to God, thank you, Jesus, amen. He takes the mantle of Elijah and the belt of Elijah, and he takes it out of the temple, and he tells his son one day, you're going to have the same spirit that this prophet of God carried. You're going to have his portion. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. I'm just trying to illustrate something here. But the rabbinical teachers say that he took that the, the mantle of Elijah and Elisha was taken and buried in the temple. Well, this man looks exactly like Elijah according to Scripture. That's why they said, Are you Elijah the prophet? Come back from the dead. Elisha, are you Elisha the prophet? Come back from the dead. He said, No, I'm not. <laughs> but his gift, his mantle made room for him. But see, his father had to instill that word into him. You're going to grow up just like Elisha. And just like Elisha, he ate what Elisha ate. Are you hearing me? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Bless the Lord. And let me say this. 
your identity is found in God. Not in your own works, not in yourself, but in God. Because remember, at the water parting, the Father spoke and he said, This is my beloved Son. The Father spoke, the waters parted, and the Spirit came down. The Father said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. He had not done yet one miracle. He was not being identified for his accomplishments. He was being identified for his essence. Hallelujah, Jesus. Bless God. Amen. If you're out there and you're lost or backslid, Jesus loves you. And it's time to come home. It's time to get your life under the blood of Jesus. It's time to hear God speak to you. Totelestai. It is finished. Jesus loves you. He wants to redeem you. If you're watching me, pray this prayer. Dear Jesus, I come to you a sinner. I believe you died on the cross that God the Father raised you from the dead. Lord Jesus, wash me. Cleanse me. Fill me with your spirit that I might make heaven my home. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, write to me. we got a new web page now that you can write a new email address. Write to me, Hour for Revival, one one bar, and it's nothing but uh, capital letters in the, the uh, first of each word. Hour for Revival, just like with the Cash App. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Type in Hour for Revival at yahoo.com and let me know what God has done for you. I'll send you out a certificate of sonship. If you want further prayer, write to me, Hour for Revival at yahoo.com. It might be Hour for Revival Ministries. I'll go back and, and rewrite that later. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Actually, I think it is Hour for Revival Ministries. One full bar. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Don't tell us now. It is finished. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise God. If you're sick in your body right now, in the name of Jesus, I curse every devil of sickness. I take authority over every spirit of darkness, over every spirit of infirmity. I command it to loose you and let you go free. I command every issue in your tissue to be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father God, right now, I rebuke every spirit of bondage. In the name of Jesus, I command every addiction receive an eviction by holy conviction. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I bind and renounce every demonic attack over their spirit, soul, mind, and body. I command the devil, turn them loose and let them go free in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Glory to God. If you prayed the prayer, if you got healed, if you got delivered, write to me. Let me know what God's done for you. Hour for Revival Ministries at yahoo.com. I want to pray with you and celebrate with you. In the name of Jesus, all heaven is celebrating with you right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Now, if you've never been baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire, Jesus is the baptizer in the Holy Ghost and fire. And out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. Do it now, Lord Jesus. Rocco Shoranda Rabba Baba Baba Ramandorokobosha Branda Rodobosha and Dararaboshe Brando Rabaka Shanda Rodaraboshe Randa Baba 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 Fire, fire, 
washing of the water of the word. Hi, Janie. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Well, hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. Now, if you desire to give, we now have PayPal. We've got uh, Cash App. I mean, just go to Cash App and type in Cash Tag Hour for Revival. And you can give that way your love gifts, large or small. Keep helping us bring the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ around the world, not just here but abroad as well. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I love y'all. God bless you. If you'd like to get a copy of my book, go to Amazon and buy it for $10.50. It's called McFerrin. It is an amazing Christian novel written about a man who found faith in God trying to find his way back home to the homelands of his forefathers. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Not only does it got a great story, but it's got great pictures. I mean, I love these pictures. My Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Great illustrations. I'm telling you what. So if you'd like to get a copy of my book, go to Amazon, buy a copy of the book. And all the time, God is good. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Type in McFerrin or my name, Henry Robert Kidd, and get your copy of the book, McFerrin. Amen. It will change your life. There has been several adults as well as children. They've let me know that they've made a relationship. They found the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Reading my book, McFerrin, let me tell you something. I grew up with ADD and ADHD, and God still used me to write a book. So if God can use me, he can use anybody for his work. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Janie said she got the Holy Ghost this morning. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Glory to God. Amen. Praise you, Lord. I love you. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals, where it's always the hour for revival. I'm your brother in the Lord, Brother HR, and it's always the hour for revival. I love you. God bless you. I'll see you in the next meeting or in the air in heaven. I love you. God bless. Bye-bye. Please share this message. If you're on YouTube, like, subscribe, and share. Hit that bell notification to get more videos just like this one tonight. Amen. Bless the Lord. It's literally 11 o'clock at night. I got to go, y'all. I love you. God bless. Please share the video. If it's been a blessing to you, be a blessing to others. God bless you. I love you.